So, welcome to this session. Uh, my name is uh, Håkan Kodern from Eurostep Group. Uh, I've been working there for a long time. I was actually one of the founders of Eurostep uh, 21 years ago. Uh, we <coughs> I will have, uh, have the pleasure to, to do this presentation together with uh, Trond Zimmerman from Volvo Group. Uh, and he will uh, do most of the presentations. I have a few slides here, here as an introduction. Uh, and we will talk about, the topic is taking PLM collaboration to the next level for a strategic joint venture product development. It, it will be, I guess, the case studies joint venture related, but what Trond is presenting is a little bit broader than that, but you will hear that. Uh, and just sort of reflecting, I was here uh, one year ago, uh, not with Volvo, but with uh, Siemens turbines, Siemens Industrial Turbo Machinery, a person called uh, Christopher Thurison. And then we presented on a similar topic. That, at that year, we, last year, we talked about secure data sharing in the extended enterprise. So this, this is similar, but uh, yet uh, a little bit different. We have, of course, continued to work with the Siemens uh, implementation and also since a, almost a year back, uh, working now with Volvo Group as well. Uh, and this is sort of the, one of the, my few slides. We, <coughs> what we, this is a slide I used last year. It's, <coughs> it's about our software, <coughs> share space. And different, I think, from what we heard a lot this morning. This is a software not for internal PLM or internal ERP. This is really software designed for uh, collaboration. <coughs> and then you have to focus on a few things that are different uh, from if you do an internal PLM thing. Security, we have heard it in many presentations today, is important. Ownership of information, protecting IPR. Identifiers on the items is very critical if you want to share data with, with others. That you get notifications across the company borders. Consolidating information from different sources. And of course, integration aspect. Integration with authoring software and team data management software. Uh, and this adding complexity in heterogeneous environments. Because if you work with suppliers and partners and customers, there is no way you can really control everything they have in terms of processes and IT <coughs> systems. So what ShareSpace is, is a, it's a designed for a quick setup for new collaboration projects. And we don't really interfere with internal processes and internal <coughs> ISIT system at, at, the, at the partners. Because if you start to do that, it again takes forever, especially if you have a, a sort of a complex uh, uh, network you work with. It's standards based uh, and it really covers the full life cycle. So uh, <coughs> from requirements to end of life in the first phase and then back again as Peter Bellel was mentioning, the multi life cycles uh, support we need to have today. We, we can in space also of course support native CAD files, PDF uh, documents and so on. <coughs> and what we, what we are doing, we are not excluding data exchange, but we don't really see that as, as the future. And someone was mentioning uh, sharing today. I think it was Joss uh, doing that. And that's really the future because data exchange, as one person from BA system said, the better you are at data exchange, the worse is your situation in terms of configuration management because you, you send a lot of stuff around and in the end you don't really know what is where and who's doing uh, what and what version of, of the information. So with that, I'm done. I Remember, I have three slides in the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Meanwhile, I will uh, watch the World Cup and report to you. OK. My name is uh, Trond Simmerman. Uh, I work for the Volvo Group uh, in the technology division. I'm a portfolio, uh, PDM portfolio manager, which means that uh, I'm responsible for our uh, the, uh, continuous evolvement and improvements of, uh, of our PDM solutions were uh, used across the group, and also uh, the maintenance of those solutions. Uh, I have had my position basically uh, for four years now. Uh, that's about it. Uh, taking PLM collaboration to the next level for joint venture product development. That's the title. Uh, 
this is the table of contents that I will bring you through. Uh, first, a few slides of uh, what the Volvo Group Trucks Technology is. Uh, then I will uh, let you in uh, to understand what kind of business challenges and scenarios we foresaw uh, basically one and a half year ago uh, while uh, being challenged with uh, a particular joint venture which I will come back to the establishment of a joint venture company. I will talk then about uh, some collaboration requirements that we have and have had. Uh, also get you uh, shortly into the solution selection criteria that we used while in the pre-study phase of the sort of, of, of the projects and of the roadmap that we're now executing on. And at last I will uh, get you through uh, the performed implementations and reflect on the lessons learned so far. Okay? Uh, the Volvo Group organization consists of three main divisions, one for sales, one for operations and one for uh, research and development, named technology. Uh, truck, the truck business constitutes somewhere, in, somewhere uh, in between 70 and 75 percent of the group turnover. So it's, uh, that's the main thing. Then in the, in the Volvo Group we also have construction equipment, the business areas with Volvo Buses and Volvo Penta and also Volvo Financial Services. So I work in the, in the top right box. Uh, the Volvo Group vision is to become world leader in sustainable transport solutions. And to become world leader you need to partner, you need to partner a lot, you need to engage in various ways. For instance, through the establishment of joint ventures, uh, getting breakthroughs in new markets and so forth. And that's sort of the group vision trigger for uh, what we have done in terms of collaboration management solutions lately. Uh, the Volvo Group tracks technology. Uh, is divided into a few organizational blocks. Uh, we have the technology product project parts with product planning, advanced technology and research and basically project management organization. And then we have the big bulk of engineers that work in either complete vehicle, powertrain engineering and or vehicle engineering. Vehicle engineering then consists of chassis, cab and powertrain installation. Uh, and those are all engaged uh, in, in uh, supplier collaboration, partner collaboration, collaboration towards joint ventures. What's worth to mention here is also that uh, the group trucks technology does not only have a responsibility towards the truck business, but also to some extent, and it could vary a little bit, towards Volvo buses, Volvo construction equipment and Volvo Penta, taking some responsibilities, sometimes less, sometimes more, uh, towards their development or research and development. Uh, these are the main Volvo Group brands, of course, Volvo, as you can understand. Uh, where we have trucks, buses, construction equipment and uh, uh, marine uh, applications. Uh, other truck brands is Aisha Trucks, which is uh, performed through a joint venture. Uh, Dongfeng Commercial Vehicles, which is uh, sort of the subject of the rest of the presentation, because that has been the setup of that one has been the driver for uh, what I present and what we have done lately. We have Mack trucks and UD trucks and Renault trucks. And on the buses side we have Nova Bus, Prevost and Sunwin as, uh, as the additional brands and for construction equipment SDLG. Okay. That's it. Volvo Group Trucks Technology. 
What about the business challenges and scenarios then? Uh, overall driver to what we have done during the last uh, one and a half year is the uh, announcement of the Volvo Dongfeng joint venture company, Dongfeng Commercial Vehicles. That was announced in January uh, two years ago. And that was basically settled a month ago, exactly two years after when the, the company was uh, started up. Uh, it was originally uh, intended to be up and running this joint venture in one year, but it took two years uh, due to multiple reasons. But now there is a uh, finished agreement and the company has been established. Uh, I will of course not go into uh, product plans and, uh, and details in how uh, Volvo will relate to, to the joint venture company. But related to the joint venture, venture company setup and also its carrying through sort of. Uh, we foresee and we have uh, had in mind a set of basic scenarios for how to uh, perform uh, collaboration management and uh, to be supported by, by uh, a set of solutions. One being knowledge transfer, where one party uh, bring uh, basically product knowledge, uh, component knowledge, to the other one. Uh, one being product transfer, where one company supplies the other company with components, main components, or uh, yeah, basically that. And in between, you could say, uh, scenarios uh, where we de uh, perform development collaboration. Where one party is, uh, one party is uh, responsible for a development, but when that will be brought into the products of the other, and vice versa. And also, uh, we have uh, or foresee, uh, and that is maybe not from day one, as you can understand, but some kind of maintenance collaboration phase that will uh, be about for, for, for decades at the later stage. Uh, connected to these requirements uh, or these uh, basic scenarios, uh, we are also preparing and we have also uh, developed processes and, solu and IT solution support for uh, cross-functional development, you could say. Not only engineering, but also sale purchasing, sales, manufacturing and aftermarket preparation. And that is brought into the pot as well into the complexity of these uh, scenarios. Uh, still one and a half year ago, one, one and a half year ago, uh, we concluded basically that we had, uh, regarding ourselves, that we had many areas for improvement uh, with regard to collaboration management. Uh, our experiences and lessons learned uh, uh, com comprise the experience that uh, every time or very often when we are to engage with a, with, a, with a development supplier or a partner or even a joint venture because we had previous experiences, we are always getting uh, as a process and IT organization, we're all, all, always getting very short notice on the, on the detailed business requirements and what is basically written in the, in the business agreements. Okay? That was one part. Uh, often requests in that sense uh, were of, often poorly specified on a process level without the prerequisites that external users should be let into Volvo applications. That is sort of the easy way, in or out, or how you see it. Uh, a way that we have had, and still have actually, uh, to mitigate this circumstance was to 
limited access enable uh, uh, a portion of our uh, critical or core applications to restrict data access in those. <clears throat> and we have many of, we have many of those, uh, them in the, in the PDM domain. However, they have always been, and, uh, they have always been, been developed and are maintained more or less in an ad hoc manner. Not bringing in a complete sort of end state map uh, perspective onto their uh, development. Uh, and we have also experienced that uh, a lot of these solutions and also the, the usage of uh, SharePoint uh, applications and, and, and similar things uh, have their uh, limitations. It, it is not o o always uh, possible in a legacy, a legacy application uh, to fully protect what is not subject to collaboration, so to say. So that, that when you share a portion of your product, uh, product information, uh, quite often uh, <laughs> a little bit extra platform information slips into what is uh, transparent or visible. Uh, we have also, also experienced that uh, once a setup to, for collaboration towards a partner or supplier or, or a joint venture have been established, uh, there, is, there are almost no ways to, to change, sort of, uh, to shift processes or to shift into other solutions. Then you are stuck, more or less. So with, it, with this um, sort of base, experience base, uh, we concluded that, well, we need something more, we need something better, we need something more scalable, persistent, or yeah, everything that you can imagine. So we stated onto ourselves, onto the business, and got buy-in from the, from, the, from the real business, a collaboration management vision uh, that was to provide scalable tools and processes to support effective and secure external collaboration management and information sharing, divided into uh, that we wanted capabilities to effectively establish and modify setups, is to get up and running, to mitigate the circumstance that when the business agreement is settled, you have almost no time to, 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 to be up and running. Uh, efficient and controlled and efficient information sharing and two-way confidentiality, integrity and availability in relation to our joint venture partners, development suppliers, suppliers and others. And this vision has been really good to guide us through. And we argue, or I argue internally, that it is okay. That it is really an enable, enabler for reduced lead times and thus to be, become an agile partner, which is needed if Volvo is to become the world leader in sustainable transport solutions. So that is where sort of the connection is to the second slide. Also a retrospect slide. This is not what we have today, but what we foresee uh, a year and a half ago uh, in terms of what we had and in terms of what we wanted. Uh, we had an ASIS with, uh, to some extent, limited access enabled solutions with no overview of roles, risks, uh, and incorrect authorizations uh, uh, and non-consolidated uh, view on information, uh, high risk in terms of uh, leak information leakage. It was costly uh, and uh, hard to maintain and still is. And it required extensive training in Volvo processes and solutions for, for our partners and suppliers as well. What we imagined in terms of to be was some kind of collaboration space which could connect to our uh, server, internal server, service oriented architecture, that could connect to our uh, in house applications through 
uh, our PLM service bus. That would bring about a consolidated view on, uh, uh, on information and uh, facilitate product management across, across uh, entities. That would uh, provide us support in structured uh, role and identity management that was maintainable, that was, could provide structure in context, regardless of what context. That could be quick and set to set up, that would be scalable, and that could support many use cases. Okay? So this is actually one of the sort of sell-in sell -in pictures that we used at that time. To, to get things started. Okay, that was business challenges and scenarios. Now uh, let's get into some uh, um, collaboration requirements. Uh, the business value connected to, to uh, a collaboration management solution. We, divide, we have divided them into information management capabilities and also collaboration management capabilities. And I will dig deep, deeper into those in next slide, basically. But you can you could understand what kind of capabilities that we outlined and have outlined in the, in, in the, in the left part of this slide. But uh, <coughs> the connected business values towards the information man management and the collaboration management cap capabilities reside in reduced lead times in uh, development and in collaboration, increased delivery precision, transparency towards management on both sides, uh, homogeneous interface for information exchange and reduced cost of resources. Uh, the key features uh, that we started with, and I will come back to the prolongation of those uh, in one of the next slides, but are relates to performance, uh, to structured dressing of, uh, of, of components, where we categorize parts with agreed attributes, where we can dress parts with clean technical documentation. Uh, controlled information sharing, where we could uh, exchange information with version control, where we could have a published workflow that includes not only the, uh, the engineers uh, owning the information, but also those that are intended to supervision uh, the collaboration. Traceability of what has been shared, by whom and when, and also secure, the inform secure uh, uh, information sharing when it comes to access authorization and security zones. Least and not last, a controlled lim and limited flow of, uh, of request issues and questions. We want to, and I think we have managed to, funnel uh, the collaboration to uh, through this solution in, in a very good way, excluding almost a necessity for other means of communication than what is intended or what is uh, subject for collaboration. Uh, this is the capability view that we have on collaboration. And uh, I could admit that in the right part, it, it, it's a little bit visionary. It's uh, still floating. But in the mid and left part of this, uh, it's steady. And basically, this is a view on what we have implemented first when it comes to basic and initial capabilities and what we are currently during this spring finalizing the development of in terms of uh, what we're doing right now. We have support for collection management, document management, part management, publish and unpublish, request for information. <laughs> notification management, etc. And we are now digging into the uh, and finalizing the development for the hard, harder parts. Requirements management, item management, structured, I would say, item management, structure management, test object management, and so forth. Not 
and we are emphasizing on the hard part with this change request handling and, and uh, release and engineering changes. So we are basically now building a solution for uh, configured products across, uh, across, the ent across entities from our joint venture partner and uh, back and forth. Okay. Uh, solution selection criteria. Uh, it's just one slide, but uh, not a year and a half ago, but a year ago, we were in the midst of uh, selecting a solution to, to, to build as our own. Uh, we thought that we had had enough of bad experiences, too many lessons to learn from. We, all, we also had rather limited time because uh, this joint venture were coming. Then we actually got a year more than we thought from the, in the beginning, and that was good. Uh, uh, we also wanted to have a holistic, ambition-based approach and to put a scalable solution in place. Even though we were starting with a basic setup, it should be scalable. And the solution selection criteria that we set up regarded business requirements, conformance to enterprise architecture regulations at Volvo, company profile and, vend uh, and vendor collaboration, solution viability, project scope and time plan al alignment, and ability to support long time collaboration vision and of course total cost. And I would say a few of those were, of course, more uh, important than others. But the product scope and time plan alignment and the two first ones were, of course, critical. And uh, we did a selection and decided on a continued approach to use the joint development agreement towards, uh, towards um, uh, Dongfeng commercial vehicles as a base and the uh, product projects. Uh, that, that had, uh, were, were planned at that time as a driver. Uh, we agreed on uh, or decided to have uh, use uh, agile development methods uh, to drive development hypothesis driven, uh, to continue uh, to let the solution prove itself in the applications that we decided upon to use a boom approach in terms of uh, the base structure for sharing, uh, sharing information and also to establish a platform. Lessons learned then and performed implementation. This is the name of what we have today. We call uh, the solution VICE, Volvo Information Sharing Externals. And that is now the preferred solution for sharing information with partners at Volvo. I would, say, I would add on to that, uh, uh, coming back to the presentation a few of us had in the, uh, b b before noon, in some particular cases where the, where the relation towards the supplier or joint venture is such that we are to be a little bit care careful, you could say. It allows uh, efficient and secure ways of sharing product information and it can be used for a variety of information related to collaboration. PDM data, general information and a lot of things therein. And it provides support for collaboration management. This is uh, the table of contents for the solution that we have put in place before, before uh, shift of year. Uh, it doesn't include the capabilities that we are realizing right, right now. But what we have in terms of our basic solution is the ability to manage collections, manage documents, manage parts, publish and unpublish, manage requests for information, manage notification, search, view and navigate in a nice way, I would say in a very nice way, uh, manage delivery complete, manage issues and to perform reports and exports. What is not here but more under the hood is that we have also in the solution managed to
conf uh, configure it in a way and use it in a way that we could bring in additional attributes onto documents and onto parts and uh, such things, which enable us, uh, which have already enabled us to bring this not, on, not only into the hardware domain, but into the software domain. And that will let us easily bring the solution into the purchasing aftermarket and manufacturing domains. So there is a twist sort of, of, of on the solution that we have and that uh, is very nice to have now and it's not visible in this picture. I wanted to mention that. Last slide. <coughs> From me at least. The lessons learned and way forward. Uh, onto the entirety of what we have done so far. Uh, I have and we have experienced that it is very good to let new businesses, significant projects, drive development of new processes. But that every, every, everybody may be new. But we have really experienced this uh, in this. Uh, Hypothesis-driven development is very good uh, if you base it on a clear vision. If you manage to promote solutions, processes onto the business, and when you have a business that has not the ability maybe to articulate uh, detailed requirements, you cannot just ask for a, come and ask for requirements. You, you need to promote a process, promote a solution. Could this work? And so forth. Uh, this is good when you endeavor something that is so new to the company on, a, on a such a broad scale uh, as in our case. Agile development is good, settle basic collaboration solution and uh, use the approach to let the solution continue to prove itself. Uh, we have found that a simple information sharing structure as a base or as a start is very good. For it could be a boom approach in terms of uh, giving a skeleton onto the information sharing that you should perform. Uh, include not only the OEM perspective, the Volvo perspective in this case, onto solution requirements, but also partner, supplier, and GV, JV perspectives. Uh, the importance when you bring in not only information specialists, but also regular engineers into, into uh, a collaboration process. Don't es underestimate the importance of an easy to use user interface uh, uh, when you do that. <coughs> and then have a tight com connection, mu secure that you are, or ensure that you have mutual interests and provide transparency and get transparency in, in the relation to towards the software vendor. That's one path to, to succeed in your, in your um, ah, ambitions. Hmm? Hold on. Okay. Thank you very much, John, for a good presentation. <coughs> so I will. <coughs> this was your last slide, actually. Oh, that's me. <laughs> so I have uh, three slides. One is <coughs> the favorite person to quote last year, and I've seen a few also this year, was is, uh, uh, Mr. Einstein. And we are <coughs> driven by, by this. Everything should be made as simple as possible, but not simpler. And PLM is not really super simple, and PLM collaboration is even somehow worse. And we need, as Tron is saying, we need to make it as simple as possible, really, to, to get buy-in for what we're doing. But there is a limitation. There, there, there is some some level of complexity into this. And you can hear from Trond, even they're looking at different uh, collaboration scenarios. So it's not just collaboration. You can do col collaboration in many ways. This is <coughs> sort of my, my, uh, my second to last slide. And I just want to say a little bit what we are doing with ShareSpace, which is the software used here, and sort of link it into some of the uh, <coughs> hype words in the PLM domain today. If you take ShareSpace as a consolidation engine, really what taking data from different sources, bringing them into one, the, the data that should be shared, bringing them into one source, uh, we sort of 
touching upon master data management, big data, we certainly address data quality, IP protection, configuration management in terms of we are doing sharing and not uh, data exchange. Uh, many times we <coughs> deliver a share space for internally doing this, and then we have another share space to address the external world. That is a perfect fit, uh, and we are working with Microsoft today on this, to have this uh, service in the cloud, of course. And that, so that relates to the cloud and data access and mobile and also IP protection because, again, you will, you will have a clear boundary between what's internal here and external. And last, oh, sorry, last, is <clears throat> that we see, of course, this mobile Internet of Things and bring your own device, bring your own ID, all this stuff becoming increasingly important. So what we can see, supporting devices here, <clears throat> as we are doing, uh, doing that, for example, a field engineer working on the device, connecting to the cloud, connecting to the internal share space here. You can get access here as a service engineer to data that resides in the ERP system, in the PLM system, in the technical documentation system, in some spare part system. And that's really the kind of support you should have if to, to, to do real good service work. Uh, finally, we are here in the exhibition, so uh, if, you, if you want to talk with us, uh, also Tron will be with us now for the afternoon, at least in the breaks. Come and talk to us. I think maybe we have time for one, one or two questions. Hi, my name is Andrew Tate. I'm from the Royal National Lifeboat Institution in the UK. Um, you talked about mobile engineers. Have you got that configured so that, that works and the mobile engineers can access all the data through ShareSpace? We are working on it right now in some projects, yes. And we have been able to demonstrate that it, it works uh, like this. <clears throat> I, expect, I would expect that in uh, three, four months' time, we will actually have a commercial uh, application up and running like this. So three or four months' time, how much work have you done up to this point? I would say the complex work is really this, because Share Space was designed to fit the recent or the, the last redesign we did with Share Space was to fit it into the cloud architecture. So that's not a big thing really. If you think about uh, information as a service, the, the, if you really want to use the scalability and all these things as, uh, with the cloud, that will be later on with us. Um, so this is complexity. How because all the all the team centers and SAPs and everything in the world they are uniquely configured out there. So the mapping with these are, are the tricky part, really. And we are working on making that mapping as easy as possible. But uh, this is sort of a no-brainer. This is a no-brainer. So the complexity is here, really. <clears throat> Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you very much for coming here.